Hello everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Uh, welcome to a new day of your life. I hope that you're doing well. Um, this topic today is one that I'm sure just about everybody is going to relate to in some level or another. And a lot of women in our 60 and Me community and people in general are going through a downsizing phase. We're trying to limit the amount of stuff that comes into our house. And I think it's a good um, strategy that, you know, and especially with all the online uh, shopping requirements that we have these days, we're ending up with cardboard and boxes and all kinds of things that are you know, just overwhelming us. But one of our bloggers, Leslie Spellman, wrote this article on how to control um, the, the one thing that we annoys us probably the most, and that is paper clutter. You know, you've got little piles of paper all around your house. I'm looking at my desk as an example, but um, it's just so easy for paper to paper to collect. And most of it is um, stuff that we didn't even ask for. Um, I know in, in uh, Switzerland, you can actually put a little sign on your um, mailbox that says no, no junk mail, please. And, but things still seem to sneak in and you know, half of it, as I said, we never even asked for it, and it finds its it finds its home in our kitchens, in our living rooms, in piles, and we just, I don't know. There's something about it. We always like think there might be something in there that's interesting. There's something about putting it through the mail. That's why they do it, I guess, that we just prioritize it over you know, a newspaper or something that just gets thrown on the ground. But anyway, the point here is to get ahead of the clutter and ahead of the uh, challenge before it even becomes a problem for you. And so if you spend, um, you know, just five minutes a day just dealing with your clutter as it arrives, even taking things out of the envelope I found helps. And you, then you can, if it's a bill, you can put that aside, but throw that envelope away. It's just minimizing the amount of just paper, just the actual volume of paper. And please, if you've got a way to recycle it, do that. I have a special bin in my house for paper and that's where I put all the paper stuff. And we have a little recycling place where you can go, but probably um, in the United States and Canada, other parts of Europe, you can have a little, like a proper recycling garbage bin or bag. Anyway, that's just a reminder that paper should not be just randomly thrown away, in my opinion. <laughs> We've got ways to actually take care of it and uh, in, a, in a positive way, recycle it. But anyway, breaking down the task of dealing with paper is just like everything else, the easiest way to deal with the challenge. Just do it like, don't try to do it all at once. Just break it down into categories that you feel are relevant. And so Leslie does a good job here of, of categorizing all the things that you get in your house that are paper related and then how you can deal with them. Okay, so the first one, oh, and this is shredders too. You can buy shredders <laughs> if, they're, if they're, don't like keep them because they've got personal information, just either take them to the libraries usually have shredders. And I know here we at our recycling, we have a shredder that you can use for you know old bank statements and that kind of thing. But anyway, um, the, the main most important thing is to identify where they're coming from. So the first one is adverts or papers trying to get you to buy something. Now, even though we have the little sign that this is no junk mail, people still seem to stick their little taxi uh, business cards or uh, house cleaning or, you know, something that's like on just a little card and they put it through your ma mailbox. Those, um, obviously, you can just put them to one side. And if you do need a taxi a card, keep it. But most of the time, 99%, you'll, you'll end up discarding it in the recycling. The second thing is coupons. Now I know coupons actually are very um, useful sometimes. People love them and they can be very helpful and, and uh, save money. We have, uh, here we have a company, uh, one of our grocery stores called Migros and they um, they keep track of, like you have a card, like every time you buy something, you, you scan your card and then they send you a coupon at the end of the month for, for money, like $10, 20, whatever you've spent, based on whatever you've spent. And it's really cool um, that I would, I always open those um, envelopes, but with that envelope usually comes a bunch of advertising for reasons to continue to buy more money, more things there and earn more money. But you have to ignore that. You have to be strong. <laughs> you have to be brave and just say, put it away. Just take out the coupon for the $10 and put our 10 um, francs and then just save it for the next time you're in the shop. So coupons, and if you love coupons, go for it. Um, but if not, and you're never going to buy, you know, 10 ton jar of mayonnaise, then you don't need that coupon. You don't. <laughs> um, envelopes. As I mentioned earlier, envelopes are actually something that I, I, I get this thrill out of opening something up and just take the letter out, put that to one side. If it's something that I need to pay a bill, for example, as I said, I'll put, I'll put that to one side and throw the envelope away. 
You don't need the envelope. It's, it's done its job. <laughs> it's got the letter to you. So now you can throw that away, unless there's a return address, of course, on it that you need. Oh, um, I did that during Christmas, actually. I sent, I did some envelopes, and then I realized I didn't have that person's address. But, um, you know, you know, you know what to do. Um, the other one that most people have trouble getting rid of, for some reason, it's, I, I'm in this category, are documents that are terms and conditions. You know, you get a bank, like a new bank card and it comes in the mail and you open it, you put the envelope away and you take it out of its little holder and you put it in your purse. And then you realize that there's like three pages or four pages of terms and conditions. And you think, oh my gosh, um, I should probably read those. Well, what is the likelihood that you're going to read three pages of eight point font terms and conditions. I think if you have any questions, you could just call the bank or call the whatever company it is and ask them to sort of give the highlights of, of their terms and conditions that might impact you. They just have their legal requirements. And so the terms and conditions are hardly ever referred back to. So you can let those go. They can go. Um, duplicate bank and credit card statements. Again, everything is online these days. You know, you can actually go to your um, your website uh, of your bank or, or credit union or um, your you know your, your um, any bank, and you you you'll, you'll be able to get all the information that you need. You do not need to keep all the copies of the copies of the copies of the statements. They're there on online. If you're not comfortable with online, of course, keep your statements. I actually do keep statements for some things, um, like from month to month in case, like if there's a, not a dispute, but something that I might return or, you know, I'll keep that statement. So I've got it like hand to hand. You can always take a picture of it and send it with your message. But um, anyway, for the most part, you can get rid of those. You can, you can let them go. Uh, letters that are for info only. Reminder that you've got a doctor's appointment next Thursday at five o'clock. Put it in or whatever. Put it in your diary and throw the piece of paper away. You don't need a reminder of a reminder. The only one I do keep the paper for is my hair appointments. Like when I have a hairdresser's appointment, I'll take the card and I'll stick it on my, actually stick it on my calendar. Like I have a little wool calendar, which is really just some art uh, pictures and I'll put my doctor's appointments and hair appointments. But um, you don't need to keep those letters reminding you of reminders of times and dates and places. The other one, I don't know if I've mentioned it earlier, but it's, it's charity requests. Now, charity requests are, are lovely because, you know, there's obviously people doing good things and there's a lot of people that are doing things to take your money. Um, and I always uh, like to research any charity that I support so to make sure it's the money's going to the right place. And, um, you know, you have everybody has their way. But for charity uh, solicitations, they'll often do a really sneaky thing. I know, don't know about in the States anymore, but they'll often like, put an envelope, like a kind of a thick envelope and you open it up and you think it's, it doesn't isn't clear who it's from. And it will be like a in like a notepad or some card or some postcard that, you know, they send you free of charge. And the hope, of course, is that you'll like it so much, you'll use it, some stickers maybe. And you'll, or, that's a good one, stickers with your address on it. Who doesn't need that? But <laughs> you get the point. Uh, you, you don't need them. You don't need them. And just let them go. Um, but those kinds of uh, charity requests, if, you, if it's a charity that you support, go for it. If it's not, then don't need to, to keep the paper. Take away menus. How many pizza companies or, um, you know, new vegan delivery service or smoothie delivery service or just some new thing that's going on? Some of it's kind of cool. I mean, some of it is new and innovative and it's from a local uh, person who's doing something fun with a new business, chocolates, whatever. I, I actually keep those because I want to support local business. But if it's like a, you know, a company that is just literally passing this out to millions of people to, to get you aware of their brand and whatever, um, you know, I don't want to take a takeaway menu and you know never order it i mean that's another thing when you're in a restaurant and you're you be ordering a takeaway and then you take the menu put it in your bag how many times are you going to use it again <laughs> probably not very often you'll go back in again or you'll phone and you'll you'll look online it's very rare will you look at that menu that you picked up and took with you and put it in your in your backpack or your bag but you get the idea um may tackling mail says leslie a priority 
you know, the paperwork needs our attention. Some of it is important and it really does need us to pay attention to it, but it really can be such a hassle. For most people, a lot of people cite paper as their worst clutter nightmare. I mean, I know that they might mean with that books and other things that are paper that can go online now, but if you've got, um, you know, the ability to sort through your paper, throw it out, recycle it, it's, it's a really useful way to downsize uh, a part of your life that can be very annoying. So paper clutter is, um, is, is a good one to, to deal with. So are you dealing with paper clutter? Do you, do you deal with your mail as, as soon as it arrives or have you got little stacks that are growing and growing? <laughs> do, you, do you feel really like wedded to keeping them? Please leave your comments in the section below. Let's have a chat about paper clutter. It's actually one of my favorite topics because I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you and being challenged by it. Something about paper that's very seductive. Anyway, take really good care of yourselves. Keep your paper clutter at bay with all your other downsizing activities and know that uh, we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for all your support and love and sending it back to you too. Take very good care of yourselves. Stay safe and strong and well and happy. Take care. Bye-bye for now.